In this video, we're going to go over JavaScript objects. And uh, we're not actually going to do any coding in this video, so you can kick back and relax, put the keyboard aside, because I want to just explain the concept of objects, and then in the next few videos, we'll actually code an object up. But in this video and in the next one, we're just going to talk about the concepts of what a JavaScript object is. Now, objects are used in literally every OOP language, and JavaScript is no exception to that. Now, when people first hear about objects, they are very, very intimidated by this. And they really are not intimidating, actually. Once you understand the concept, they're pretty easy to understand. Now, what if we were creating a game and we wanted to create an orc in our game? And so, could we use a single variable over here to describe that orc? In this case, we've just got a single variable that holds the value of green. Now, can that really describe what an orc is? Uh, not really. Uh, could the variable height with just one value here, could that describe an orc? Not really. So by themselves, these variables don't mean a lot. But if we put them all together, wrap them all up, and assign them to one variable, now they mean something. All of these variables together assigned to this variable orc. And yes, an object actually is a variable, but we can call it an object now because we are putting all of these variables into our object variable, as I like to call it. And so at a basic level, that's what an object is. We're just taking all of these variables, wrapping them all up, and putting them in between these squiggly brackets, and that gets us our object because we can now assign it to one variable, our variable orc. Now, the other important point to make here is that the variables that we put in here should be related to an orc, not something else. So, for instance, I wouldn't put a value in here for a car engine or something that is unrelated to an orc. That's the point of an object. These all should be related in some way to our object, which is an orc. Now, once we put variables inside an object, they are actually called properties. And so that's what they call them. They are variables, but they want to use the name property. So they actually are called properties. So again, I want you to start thinking of objects as something that exists in real life. And objects in real life have multiple properties. And you can think of literally anything. Think of a lamp. A lamp has multiple properties. It has a height. It has a width. It has a lampshade. It has a manufacturer. Those are all properties that we could put inside of our object and store them. Now, how do we access an object? It's very simple. We use the object name, which in this case is orc. That always comes first, followed by a dot. And basically, all the dot does is tell JavaScript what we're going to access inside of our object, in this case, height. So think of it that way. It's just a way to access a specific property inside of our object, and in this case, height. We could put weight here, we could put color, and so that's what that dot does. And so the property always comes after the dot. The object name always comes before the dot. So that's the way to understand that. Now, you might have also noticed something else. This variable or property inside of our object looks a little bit different from our standalone variable. You'll notice that we lopped off the VAR, and that's the key point here. We don't put the VAR keyword in here, and you'll also notice we dropped the equal sign, and now we're using a colon. And we don't use a semicolon, we use a comma to separate each one of our properties. Uh, the last one doesn't actually need a comma. So the last one doesn't need one. You can actually put a comma there, but it doesn't need it. Now, you will also hear these properties referred to as name value pairs. So this is the name. This is the value. Together, they're called name value pairs. So just yet another nomenclature that you might hear out there. So at a basic level, that is how objects work. Now, you might ask the question, well, wait a minute. In the last video, we did these arrays, and they hold multiple values. Aren't those objects as well? And the answer to that is yes, but they are not normal objects in the way we like to think of them. They're a little bit different. Now, the main difference is, you will remember in the last video, each one of these values has an index. So this first one would be 0, this second one would be 1, this third one would be 2, and so on. But normal objects have the name value pair. We don't need to use index. We just specify a name here and then associate our value. Over here, it's just an index number. Now, it's a lot easier to remember a name than it is a number. So that's why objects are much easier to use if you have different data types. And in this case, we have a string data type. In this case, we have an integer for our data type. We could also have a Boolean as a true false. So arrays are really not practical for storing different types of data types. They're actually better if you're storing one type of data type 
and especially if you're using integers. So if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we had to store a bunch of integers. And in that case, arrays are useful because we don't necessarily need to remember the name. But we'll talk about arrays in future videos and why we want to use arrays as opposed to objects. But objects are going to be the primary thing you're going to be dealing with because once again, that name value pair is much easier to use than an index. So if we wanted to access the height, I don't have to go in here and find out what the index is. I can just write orc dot height and then we can go ahead and do whatever we want with the value so let's flip back to the other slide so once again we are simply taking a bunch of variables that are doing something similar and wrapping it up into an object in this case orc and again that gets us our object now in this video we've just talked about properties that describe our object but what if our orc needs to run and perform some actions? Well, that's different because properties don't do that. They just describe the orc, but they do not provide any action. And so there are two parts to an object. There are the properties that describe the object, and then there are actions that the orc can do, such as run, swim, eat, all these different actions. And that's what we will talk about in the next video. See you guys then.